Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a really cool class of integrals called Bose-Einstein integrals. And they also have a nice cousin called the Fermi-Dirac integrals, and these are the type of integrals you'll find in quantum systems. So they're bound to give us really interesting looking results in terms of special functions. So what are we waiting for? It's time to evaluate this thing. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s dx divided by e to the x minus t minus 1, where the t parameter here is supposed to be negative. So the first thing I'd like to do here is play around with the integrand a bit. So we have integral 0 to infinity, x to the s dx divided by e to the x times e to the negative t minus 1. So one thing we could do is expand using the multiplicative inverse of e to the x. So we'll expand using e to the negative x. That way we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x dx divided by e to the negative t minus e to the negative x. Okay, cool. And we can even factor out this e to the negative t term, but wait, we might as well call e to the negative t another name, let's call it the alpha parameter, and take note of the fact that t here is negative, so e to the negative t should be greater than 1, so the alpha parameter here is greater than 1. Okay, cool. We'll now factor out this parameter and get 1 by alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x divided by 1 minus e to the negative x by alpha dx. Now let's take note of something else, and that's the fact that x here goes from 0 to infinity, so e to the negative x here is less than 1, and that goes for e to the negative x by alpha as well, because we just saw that the alpha parameter is greater than 1. But that means we can expand 1 by 1 minus e to the negative x by alpha as an infinite sum. We have the geometric series here, so we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity, of e to the negative x by alpha all to the k. Okay, cool. This implies that the target integral i equals 1 by alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of e to the negative kx divided by alpha to the k dx. Now these two are of course independent of the index variable k, so we'll take them inside the summation operator, and we have 1 by alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative x, wait, we have the sum over k first, terribly sorry about that, of what exactly? We have x to the s times e to the negative k plus 1 times x divided by alpha to the k integration with respect to x. Now, thanks to the presence of this exponential function in k and x that acts as sort of a damping factor, there are no problems regarding convergence, so we can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to get 1 by alpha times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative k plus 1 times x divided by alpha to the k dx. Now, the 1 by alpha to the k term is independent of the integration variable, that's x. So we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity, and I'm taking this 1 by alpha term now inside, so I have 1 by alpha to the k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s times e to the negative k plus 1 times x dx, which is a really nice integral to work with because all we need here is a substitution that is letting the argument of the exponential function, that's the k plus 1 times x term, equal t. Wait, we already have a t parameter, so I might as well call it equal to u. So we have dx here equal to du divided by k plus 1. And i here equals the sum over k from 0 to infinity of 1 by alpha to the k plus 1 times the integral from 0 to infinity. The limits of integration are, of course, unaltered. And we have u to the s divided by k plus 1 to the s times e to the negative u du divided by k plus 1. So we have k plus 1 to the s in the denominator of the integrand. And that, of course, is independent of the 
variable with respect to which we're integrating. That's the x variable. So we'll take it again outside the integration operator. And we have one by alpha to the k plus one times one by k plus one to the s plus one times the integral from zero to infinity of u to the s times e to the negative u du, which we recognize as our good old pal, the gamma function evaluated here at s plus one. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals, notice that gamma s plus one is independent of the index variable. So we might as well just write this here as a multiple to the sum over k from zero to infinity of alpha to the negative k plus one divided by k plus one to the s plus one. And I'd like to perform a transformation of the index variable by shifting it from k plus one to k. That way we have i equal to gamma s plus one times the sum over the positive integers k of alpha to the negative k divided by k to the s plus one. And why exactly did I do that? Well, recall what the alpha parameter was. So alpha equals e to the negative t, which implies that alpha to the negative k equals e to the t to the k. So now we have i equal to gamma s plus one times the sum over k of what exactly? We have e to the t to the k divided by k to the s plus one. And there's a very cool function that has this kind of series expansion, and that is the polylogarithm. So the polylogarithm of order s at some z, where the absolute value of z is supposed to be less than one for the series to converge, we have the sum over k from one to infinity of z to the k divided by k to the s. So in our case, we have e to the t, t being negative, so that means e to the t is in fact less than one. And we have exactly the same series expansion except for s being replaced by s plus one. So this implies that the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s dx divided by, what exactly did we have? Oh yeah, e to the x minus t minus one equals gamma s plus one times the polylogarithm of order s plus one at e to the t. And the other integral I was talking about, or class of integrals, that is the Fermi Dirac integrals, has pretty much the same integrand. We have e to the x minus t down here as well, but we have a plus one. And using exactly the same root of calculations, we can prove that this thing equals gamma s plus one times the polylogarithm of order s plus one of negative e to the t, which is a pretty cool result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.